Hey everyone, Todd White here and I'm a Lumix Global Ambassador and I have been asked to take just a few minutes and share with you my top five things I love about the Lumix S5. So here we go from the top. Oh and by the way, these are in no particular order. So first up, let's talk about the size and the weight of this camera. So this is the S5 and it is definitely a smaller, more compact version of the full frame, the S series. And it's really more comparable to like a GH5 to a G9 range in its size and its weight. And it's really great just to drop into my everyday go bag. And I know that when I'm out and about running around, I've got a great camera, small, lightweight, but yet not lacking in advanced features. Feature number two, we have got the fully articulating screen on the S5. It's great for getting all the right angles. I can move the camera around, get the shot, make sure I've got the right framing. And of course, also two more things that I find to be important. Number one is it's great for vlogging. I can flip that out and see myself. But also, I do a lot of, of photo shoots and video shoots, if you will, where I'm working with clients that are on the other side of the camera. And it's great to be able to turn the screen around so the talent can see themselves, get a better feel for the framing, and understand kind of where their limits are as far as movement and stuff. So, feature number two, fully articulating screen. Feature number three. So this is a very video-centric and video-focused feature, and that is dual native ISO. So what that basically means with dual native ISO is that when shooting in vlog, for example, and it does work in the other profiles, my dual native ISOs are 640 and 4000. So at the base ISO of 640, I've got a really clean image. And as I start to roll and work my way up in the ISO, I'll see a little bit of noise that gets introduced. And once I get to 3200 and then I roll into 4000, then all of a sudden that noise is cleaned up and it looks like I was shooting at 640. Now what we don't hear talked about a lot is that the dual native ISO also works with taking photos. And so when you're doing still photographs, then your dual native ISO is at 100 and 640. Feature number four is the improved autofocus tracking. So for me, I shoot a lot of lifestyle and fashion photography. And the majority of the time, my models and my subjects are moving. In fact, not only now do we have eye tracking, but we have face tracking and body tracking, but now we've added head tracking into it as well. So it's really cool to watch and to see this in action while I'm shooting because I'm able to see the focus box go from the eyes, the face, and then I'm able to see it move to the head, especially when someone turns their head away and they're not looking at the camera, it still maintains and tracks their head. If you also were at the announcement for the S5, you learned that the autofocus tracking improvements for the S5 will be passed down into the S1R, the S1, and the S1H with a future firmware update. And last but not least, Feature number five, I'm actually gonna cheat a little bit here. I'm gonna pick three features that I'm gonna really lump into this category of creative modes. And those three features are gonna be the s &Q mode, my time-lapse mode, and then live view composite. Let's start off with live view composite. So the live view composite mode would often be used to get those really cool star trails and like a starry night tracking shot. What I love about this particular mode is that I can watch my image build on the back of the LCD screen in real time. Secondly, is let's talk about time-lapse. So time-lapse is just what the name implies. It's capturing images over time that end up building out a short movie that then is processed in camera. So I've used a time-lapse mode for capturing some really cool traffic shots at night just to get the movement of the cars going by. I've also set it up during a fashion shoot in the corner and I've done a time lapse of me setting up the backdrop and me working with and shooting models for an e-commerce and a lookbook shoot. And once again, processes it in camera and then I can actually transfer that image to my phone using the Lumix Sync app. And then the last thing I'll mention in my creative modes is going to be the S and Q mode. Now the S and Q mode stands for slow and quick. So it allows me to capture both fast action motion and slow motion in the camera, 
When it captures this, it will then build once again, process in camera, build it into a movie file, and then I can transfer that to my phone. Some examples of the different frame rates that you can choose from. When you're shooting in 4K, I can capture one frame per second, up to 60 frames a second. And when I'm shooting in 1080 full HD, I can capture from one frame per second all the way up to 180 frames per second. So the SQ mode, the cool addition to the S5, and just really rounds out the fun and cool creative possibilities with this camera. But like I said before, there's a lot of fun and cool creative possibilities built into the camera, but also it's really rich in features and for me, really can function like a second camera on a shoot for a video shoot, kind of like a B camera for my S1H. Or my run and gun style of shooting, I would just take this out and do an entire shoot, both photo and video with this camera. Again, my name's Todd White and I'm a Lumix Global Ambassador, and those are my top five things that I like about the Lumix S5.